Hey everyone, I'm here with uh, Carla Berkowitz, uh, executive producer of um, Critical Thinking. My name is Noah and I'm here from WEPA. So Carla, how are you today? I am great. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Love to talk about critical thinking any chance I get. Of course, yeah. I, when uh, my family and I, when we first watched the film, we just loved everything about it. Like uh, the culture, the music, the, the storyline. Uh, it was just captivating and interesting. I just loved how you guys fought for this whole, for the whole film and everything and stuff. So um, I was wondering like, for distribution rights, were you a little shocked that it, it made its way up to Canada? Did you figure it would stay in the States or did you think it would go globally? Well, so that go, that's a good question and I have, it's a little bit of a longer answer. Okay. So before COVID happened, we had been accepted into South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. which is, uh, I don't know if you know, but it's one of the preeminent, if not the preeminent film festivals in the United States, in the world. And it was perfect for us because it's a brainiac kind of festival and we're, yeah. you know, we're a chess movie and we thought it was great. And we had a prime slot Saturday night, eight o'clock, you know, we were bringing the whole cast, like 40 people and, we were, you know, it was just amazing and we were so grateful after 20 years and then a virus came to the world and destroyed everything and that's the subject of another movie, whatever, but, you know, about the virus and how long it would be and theaters closed and it was just every terrible. So I didn't really give myself the opportunity as the executive producer that I have to hand over a film, you know, and have like a whole life cycle to the project it's not just making the movie but it's selling it as well so i didn't really give myself the opportunity to get sad or upset or nervous i just simply pivoted a bit and we actually did sell the movie worldwide and north america so it took on a different trajectory uh, it didn't get into theater well it got into theaters but theaters closed and it just uh, became straight to video, which um, we were very honored because it's it, 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 in, in North America, which includes Canada, which I understand that's where you are. Yes. Um, my second favorite place in the world. But um, <laughs> it, it has, since it got released in September, it has been available on everywhere, everywhere but Netflix at, at the time. It was on Apple TV, iTunes, DirecTV, Stars, Vudu, Fandango, iTunes, Redbox, um, every single cable provider available. You just talk into your remote, you know, it comes up. Uh, YouTube had it for, you know, obviously to rent. So it was basically available everywhere and even in Canada. In North America and um, then when we sold it worldwide it is now available in almost every country it's a cult movie in Taiwan which is amazing because there's, <laughs> there's no COVID and people can see it in theaters and it's like people love it there and Nigeria South Africa England Paris Germany um, Russia Israel I mean, it is everywhere and in every place. It's it's translated into a different name. I found out yesterday by coincidence that in Russia we're actually translated as Queen's Gambit, which is really kind of funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and anyway, a couple of days ago, we found out that we had been picked up by Netflix um, in Canada. Mm -hmm. So we're not yet on Netflix in the U.S., but you never know. But I'm not. You know, it's I'm not waiting for. It. I'm just simply um, very grateful uh, for everybody that, you know, all the companies that um, see the value in this movie and pick it up so that the lessons that we impart are seen by as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And you had to make the decision whether to hold it or to, you know, release it. So w what made you want to release the film? Well, my partner is um my business partner excuse me is a little older um so i you know wanted the f 
I mean, on a personal level, uh, I wanted the film to come out, you know, as soon as possible so that God forbid anything, you know, should have happened to him. He, he would have, you know, at least seen the film come out in, in, in theaters or t on TV, on video. And, um, it, you know, it, it just so happened. So that was my particular uh, motivation. If we, I mean, we came out uh, and then a, a month later, Queen's Gambit came out. So we kind of had a little bit of, even though the two are completely different, one is a, a beautiful adaptation of a book, yes. uh, you know, about a woman. And us, ours is a true story about a 10 year program that changed a lot of people's lives, mm -hmm. including my own, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so we did, uh, we, we did decide to release it and we were hit with the Queen's Gambit um, situation. So I believe that um, it, it was good for us in a way and in the other way it took a little bit of the attention away but it there to me there's absolutely no competition like i said we're two different yeah we're two completely. different uh, completely different uh, the only thing in common is chess um when you see critical thinking uh it's not you don't learn we didn't make the movie to teach you how to play chess we made the movie to teach you why you should play chess mm -hmm. um and what it can do for you and you know, however, um, we just didn't know what was going to happen in 2020 or in a year. Um, forget, forgetting about my business partner, um, we just didn't know what was going to happen to the world. And I feel like opportunities don't always come knocking all the time. Yes. On the other hand, sometimes decisions are not good decisions. But in this case, was I think that it was a good decision. Um, considering the fact that we are now, uh, we're, this was a critical thinking was a 10 year program and there are nine years left to tell. So we are consider we are working now on developing a TV series based on I the, that. I was yeah, so excited, really exciting. I mean, yes. I can't tell you there are, there are geniuses, um, in every year of this program and we're very excited to be able to tell everyone's story who was involved. You know, there's so many other true Latino and black stories that are out there, but you chose to stick with this film, this story. What in particular made you want to choose this story? Why was it so special for you? I had woken up on a Sunday morning in Miami reading the Miami Herald, mm -hmm. which in 1997 and 98, there was a magazine uh, that came with the Sunday Herald. And there was a picture of Ito, one of the boys that was in the movie that is portrayed by George Lendeborg, and who's an incredible actor. And after I read the story, my brain exploded and I had a quantum shift. And I said to myself, who is playing chess these days? It's certainly not uh, only, you know, guys, boys from the Northeast United States in these fancy prep schools, nothing wrong with these schools, but it's not that anymore. Where are, where's all this genius coming from? And we need to illuminate it and continue to illuminate it and not just pretend that it doesn't exist. So when I met these, these, they were boys at the time, I said to them, just trust me. Once you say trust me to five 16 and 17 year old boys who hardly spoke English, <laughs> and I'm a Latina, so yeah. I'm from Venezuela, so I, I, I'm there with them, you know? Right. So once you say trust me and you see their eyes, there's really nothing that can stop, would have stopped me from making this film no matter how long it took because it, at that point, it, it left me and it went into the universe, you know? So it, um, so basically they changed me. I didn't change them. They feel, they feel like they never expected when they were born to have a movie made about their lives and the coach, Mr. T. Yeah. But really honestly, after being part of their universes, 
and fighting for them for 20 years, I'm a different person. Like I said, my mind, ex my brain exploded, my head exploded. I just couldn't believe, you know, um, genius is found in the strangest of places sometimes. And it's just, it's, it's, I think that it's uh, important that when somebody finds this genius, that doesn't happen once and never again, that just continues to happen over and over and over again, that you illuminate, that you shine a light mm -hmm. on who is actually doing this and why and where and how can I show the world? And that's what happened. Yeah, no, honestly, um, after watching this, the story and everything, uh, the film, it was very inspiring to see like you said, it's not only like, you know, the Northeast prep boys or anything like that who are playing chess or whatever. And to see these kids, you know, they're all playing it and they're all doing it and winning, no less, right? It, it's just time. amazing to see. And, and, Every time. And, yeah, and it's not, it's, and it's not spoken much about it, like stuff, stories like that as well, right? So it's then, not. Even today, it's just not. Yeah. Even today... It's not, and I'm not going to tell the world um, something that they don't already know because people know. But it's still my responsibility mm -hmm. to these to, to the boys that I that I met when they were 16 and 17 to tell the story about their lives and the coach in an elegant, accurate way that doesn't inject Hollywood magic, you know, into yeah. the story. Mm -hmm. And even though some of the language you know can be rough in the you know in the movie and some of the scenes are that was simply what was happening in 1998 in miami florida at the time yeah. and i wanted it to be as authentic as possible um keeping the locations exactly even the chess games that were played in the movie just as a fun fact were the exact chess games that they played in real life they had books and they took notes and we literally just duplicated the game. So watching the film, I can kind of tell that it was true just because I would be watching and the way the actors would be moving the pieces, the tiles would never be fully like matching right on the middle of the square. It'd be a little off to the side and you see the shakiness, the chessboard would be a little crooked. And it's because you're showing chess as nothing, something perfect, but messy, which it is, it can be messy. So. Was that a part of your guys' thought process as well? Um, showing how chess is a messy game at times? Elegant, but messy? That's a really good question uh, because we, that was totally by design. Mm -hmm. We had, um, I want to do a shout out to our cinematographer. So his name is Zach Zamboni. Okay. He used to, he used to be Anthony Bourdain's cinematographer, the, you know, the food yeah. Anthony Bourdain before he passed away. And he, you know, we, we hired him to be our cinematographer because he has a way, a special way of filming. He can make a bowl of noodles in Vietnam look like the most interesting thing in the universe. Imagine what he could do with a chessboard. Yeah. So yes, it was all by design. Um, the, the boys the, were consultants, uh, obviously, in the movie. We didn't hire any consultants because we had the actual people there. Exactly. So um, they were actually, you know, they, they had about a month or two to practice with the actors uh, to get the swag there, you know, that these guys had, and also how to move the pieces, not to be so worried about putting it in the middle of the square and not to worry about if the piece moved around and fell. And it's just, it was by design. We, um, th this is the way they played. It was a rough neighborhood and these are, these kids were rough kids until they weren't. So knowing that it took around 20 years to make this film and everything, and as an inspiring filmmaker for myself and for other inspiring filmmakers, how did you keep with that patience and and dedication to creating this film like did your confidence ever waver at all or fed up or anything like when you looked into their eyes and you you saw them and you say trust me which is the one thing i kept saying just just trust me you can't not continue to pursue it no matter what i mean there's just nothing 
you can't put it down. It's not your responsibility anymore. It's in the universe. And it's also inside their souls. You told them something that you were going to make a movie about not only their lives, but using their names first and last. They have families and they will have kids one day. They already do have kids, but you know, th this goes back. And so how can I possibly not do this when this is something that I looked in their eyes and told them I was going to do. And so 20 years is a long time. And there wasn't one day, not one single day in 20 years, not one single day that I didn't work on this movie. Even if there was nothing to work on, I simply made up stuff to do. Really? Whether it be take a trip to Los Angeles to meet with a possible producer or director or scriptwriter or whatever it was it never ever stopped and i um never had the choice for it to stop because i had promised them to and i had asked them to please trust me and that's all i can say about that i mean somebody else may have you know done something else and said look i can't i can't uh, get it together i'm so sorry you know, but that's not the type of person that I am in, 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 you know, in life in general, much less looking at 10 eyes staring at me, hoping that this would get done. No, that's really beautiful. Like you had like this personal obligation and connection to fulfill for these, yeah. for these boys and everything, which, you know, you don't see that very often in Hollywood or, no. or in anything like that. So no. to hear some, someone say, from their heart yeah needed to make this film because you made that promise or whatever it's I mean if I if I continue to say it you're gonna see me cry which I don't want to do <laughs> of course um, not yeah of because not. you know I'm have makeup on no <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding. But seriously um, I you know they asked me a question when I fin when we finished filming and we were about to edit and do post-production uh, I had sent them a group text and said, um, thank you for allowing me all these years to represent you and your lives. And I hope I make you proud when this is over and you could see the finished product. And, you know, they said, we just didn't, we just never understood why a woman like you would care about kids like us for so long and i i i cried you know my eyes out when i read that and i honestly don't have an answer other than nobody else cared nobody cared so yeah. it would have been just an article in a magazine first for the rest of the world and so i cared and i know that there are a lot of nice and beautiful stories and ideas that are circling the world not every story even though it's beautiful, needs to get told. Not every story does. Yes. Some stories do, and this story needed to get told, my opinion. And um, I told it. Yeah. Um, again, it, you don't hear this too often. So I'm just, this is really nice to hear. because Thank you. These are the types of stories that I want to get into as well, you know, uh, showing p other people's stories and everything. And so specifically in my within my culture i'm half black half latino so i want to show like how you that's awesome thank you yeah and i wanted to show like how you showed it too because you know it's one thing to be in a newspaper article which is still amazing but when you're made into a film you know you're always there you're, you're there forever everyone forever. Is a film you right know? and and we went through a lot of different characters Mm -hmm. in and out of the process whether it would be writing the script or possible directors possible actors you know just everything that you have to go through um which usually doesn't take 20 years but it did for us but after i believe that because everybody asks me why do you think it took so long and what happened and mm -hmm. I feel that um, it was like marinating, you know, it's a Latin thing, you know, it was like <laughs> marinating and marinating. And then yeah. John Leguizamo came into the picture 17 years after we started. Okay, yeah. For some, and for some strange reason, 
17 years sounds a lot longer than 20 years. I don't know exactly why, but to me, I feel like 17 years, that's ridiculous. But seven, it just looks bigger. It just looks bigger. So anyway, uh, John, when John came in, I, it hit me. I know why it took this long, because there could be no one else mm -hmm. that could have told this story, directed and starred in it the way that he did. He had just finished his Broadway show, The Run, before it was filmed for Netflix, called Latin History for Morons. Love that. Watched it like three times, yeah. Yeah, me too. I went up to New York like three times to see it. And he wanted to continue to play a teacher. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that was what the mode he was in. And this was perfect because it helped him. Like, he, he claims that um, the way he says it, it was like his antidote to all of the people that claimed throughout his life that Latin and Black actors and people were either less intelligent or less fortunate or mm. less, less you, you fill in the blank, less something. And this film showed that these boys from the ghettoest of ghettos, I mean, I'm telling you, this school was in the ghetto inside the ghetto. Oh my God went from that to where they are today. And this is why I believe, you know, it took that long. Sometimes you just don't know the answer right away and then it comes to you. John Leguizamo was almost like a missing piece to, in order to complete. Exactly. Film, right? Exactly. I, that's why, that's what I feel. Um, yeah. I think he feels the same. I know he feels the same, but I feel that. I feel that um, it wasn't technical difficulties. It wasn't lack of funding. It wasn't um, a lack of a story. It wasn't lack of locations. It wasn't lack of a pro an executive producer. It wasn't lack of anything. Mm -hmm. What it was lacking was, it Another wasn't actually here. lacking anything. What it was waiting for was for John to finish his landmark project, which other than critical thinking is Latin history for morons, which allowed him to just literally just step right into the same role as a teacher and continue his brilliance as a teacher in the movie. And so that is why you have to just keep on keeping on until you figure out like why it takes a long time to make perfection. Mm hmm exactly um and since <laughs> you care so much about the film and then you got john who probably equally cared as much or something like that it, it just fit and it was just perfect you guys had, yeah the producer and the director both caring at the same time about this special story which i loved right and you know we're both latin yes He's colombian i'm venezuelan the the man who wrote the script Dido montiel he's puerto rican all of the actors, uh, sorry, not all of the actors, uh, like three of the five actors uh, are Dominican, grew mm -hmm. up in Miami, went to one of the schools that we filmed in. Really? Everyone, um, the core group around the, the creation of the story and the movie are all Latin. Mm -hmm. And that fit in with John's sensibility at the moment and still does obviously but it it fit in perfectly with what he wanted to do plus he had never directed and so this was his directorial debut which i don't couldn't have thought of a better film to direct other agreed. than one that he started and he had such a passion for agreed yeah so then uh sorry so after this whole <laughs> this whole 20 years you know this whole journey uh, with the the the, uh, the actual people that you're telling the story about, and then having these these actors, these teenagers being or not teenagers, but young young adults being part of these um, uh, being part of the film with John and everything. When that final that's a wrap occurred, what was going through everyone's minds and emotions and everything after that? Like, how was that final? The set was different than most other movie sets. It was very free and um, very open to other people's you know, opinions. And um, John was very generous in letting people give their 
uh, opinions on how they would say the line or you know how they would act and because we had the five guys there plus the coach mr t as they called him yeah we were able to not have to uh we, we were able to allow this freedom but not deviate from the actual truth so people ask me all the time well there's bad words in the film and can my kids see it and i'm like do your kids go to school yeah. <laughs> because yeah. if they go to school there are no bad words because uh, this is not ballet class on the upper east side of new york mm -hmm. this is 1998 miami and we were accurate including the language and what happened in in the film so it was emotional because we really recreated especially the classroom scene another fun fact um if you watch the movie again and you watch the classroom scene scenes there are pictures that are tacked on the walls and those are these original pictures of the real boys in the real classroom so we did a lot of like little moments there where nobody really knows now i guess they will because i told you but <laughs> yeah so it was very emotional yeah. for everybody yeah but it was just the beginning the emotions yeah. came when we were when COVID happened, yes. they, they came to a surface because then we had to really figure out how not to have wasted not just 20 years, but this magnificent movie that we were the custodians of, this beautiful, beautiful let film. We, we were the custodians of it. And now what? So the emotions also reignited mm -hmm. when South by Southwest was canceled and the world was eaten by a virus. It was unfortunate, but even though the festival got canceled and everything, I still think the film had still had that critical impact. It had imp impacted the world, I believe. So without Thank even you. without the festival, Thank um, you. right? Just you know, being on all these um, all night streamers and everything, it still got to show the message, show these kids stories without this festival. Thank you. Everything. So I think, yeah. Actually, nice. mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Go, go oh, sorry. Ahead. I was gonna say the festival would have been nice, but I still think you've accomplished what you you set out, you and then the whole crew and everything. Thank you. You know, um, interesting what you said. I I manage all the social media myself, even mm -hmm. though we're you know a big movie. I, I I guess because I don't trust anybody to speak in my tone and on half of the movie the way that I do. So it's unsustainable right now, but I try my best. Mm -hmm. And um, I've gotten messages from, you know, random people that do not know each other, obviously, and they all say the same thing. What do you need a tin statue for? What do you need this for? When you've changed the world, you've changed my life. You know, we see yeah. ourselves. We're not from Miami, but we're from Chicago. We're from Taiwan. We're from Germany. We're from um, you know, any of the places that I've Canada. Mentioned. Canada, exactly. And we see ourselves where we never did see ourselves when we were in school. And yeah. this gives us a lot of uh, validation, even though it was, you know, it's later after it happened. And so that, that makes a big impact on me and, and on the people that made the film on the boys, because if you could change one life, you can change a universe, you know, and I feel that COVID, COVID, even with COVID, um, we still managed to change a lot of people's lives and take the sadness out of what they experienced and turn it into a badge of honor. So where do you go from here? You know, having told stories about PLC kids from the ghetto, do you continue producing stories such as these or do you start shifting and finding something else to do? The natural extension is to tell the other nine years. Yes, the TV series. Mm -hmm. um, that is what I'm working feverishly on now. Um, okay. We're not sure about the... Um, the actual format whether it's nine years nine seasons nine episodes yes. we're not sure but we you know that's what i'm doing because i have um a promise i made to myself to make sure that every boy and girl that went through this program has you know their story is told because 
the genius and beauty didn't stop in 1998. It just it kept going. So yeah. that's what I'm doing. And yes, the answer to your question is I have zero interest in stories that have zero impact. Um, and the only stories that I like are ones that are true and can change the world. In, even in the small, it sounds very cliche, I know, <laughs> but after you've made a movie that has changed the world from everybody that has seen it, then you're like, you have a different, then, then you can't go down. Yeah. You have to just go up or keep going because you can't now suddenly do something that has no, that, that maybe looks pretty, but has no meaning deeper meaning. So that's just me. 